So it says Q and A. Nice. Natalie, Q and A. Right. Beautiful, Absolutely. beautiful. Nice job. Right. So question, the questions that I have for you, chat box, questions for me and my team of smart people to help me because I don't know everything, that's for sure. And you guys have some really great questions. So put those in the Q and A so that we can, you know, and they may not always be answered live, but we have people back there who are answering those, help answering those too. They can look stuff up and I can ask them with look stuff up. Like I said, I don't know where everything and I need all the help I can get. <laughs> all right, guys, you ready to get started? Yay! All right, since it is November, I can't believe it's November. I don't know where this year has gone, but since Thanksgiving is coming up, I thought we should celebrate Thanksgiving early. Yes, we have a question already? Yeah, what about the raise hand? The what? The raise hand option. So, what about it? Charles just is asking what about it. We don't really, um, I have a function with that. Um, but if you just feel like raising your hand, I mean. Raise your hand if you want to. I'll raise it. Maybe that'll make me raise it. You raise your hand, I'll put my hand up. <laughs> this is going to be a fun we'll game. Together. Fun game here. All right. So we're celebrating Thanksgiving early here. So we're going to be thankful for all those amazing animals out there that make our world a better place. Can you guys think of some animals that we should be thankful for? What animals? that help make our planet, our Earth, and our lives a better place. What do you guys think? Put that in the chat box. What animals do you think we should be thankful for? So if you guys are writing, thank you cards. Okay, Megapods, worms. Nice. Uh. Anything else? I like that. Those, yeah. those one month, you know, the ones that most people don't think of. That's very awesome. Yeah. Right. I need thank you cards for my critters. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> birds. Oh. birds. There you go. <laughs> Look at how you're going with that one. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else have any animals we should be thankful for? Mm, yeah. He's got yeah. bees going nice. on. His pollinators. All right. Yeah. Lots of animals, right? So we're going to go over like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Thank you, cards. Oh, seven different animals we will thank today. And our first animal. They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I just love, I love that card. What was that evil laugh? It's my, it's my, uh, this cracks me up. It's the, <laughs> the squirrel. Yeah. We're saying thank you very much for uh, what? Didn't sign them. <laughs> Sharks! Shark bait. <laughs> Probably thinking, why would I be thankful for them? <laughs> you would eat me. Well, not always, right? What I'm actually thankful of sharks and other animals like <clears throat> this guy and this guy. Oh, mm. oh, this guy. Not enough hands. Oh, I need wow. Wow. Oh, gonna oh that's going to be owie. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> what do all these animals <laughs> have in common? <laughs> it's a balancing act, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to take a picture of this. Here we go. So what do all these critters uh, have in common? Does anybody guess? So I got sharks, I got owls, I 
got a polar bear. I got oh. a wolf. Charles made a comment that birds of yeah. prey uh, control the rodent and lagomorph population in the world. Lagomorph. Oh, I know, right? Questions, uh, how do they help? How do yeah. ants help? <laughs> oh. Yeah, so they are. They're kind of the cleaners of the world, right? So they'll eat then can plant for the animals. They're cleaning up that way. Um, this is pretty cool. So somebody put, I'll come back here. Ah. <laughs> it's so hard to see. So this is actually an ant hill. This is what's underground <laughs> that you don't see. So they build these amazing tunnels. And someone put, I um, can't remember what substance they poured down it. Oh, yeah. Just so that, and it hardened up and they were able to dig it out. So you could literally see a 3D version of an ant hill and what's going on under there. And if you notice, look how deep it goes and it digs through the soil. So it's actually bringing air, water, nutrients into the soil so that plants can grow. And they do it even better. Somebody said worms on it. It was my favorite. What you think? But there's so many different species of ants and there's so many of them. That they do it are much better at it than worms. So, ants are thankful for that. A lot of animals eat ants. Sadly, we're still getting yuck and <laughs> <laughs> That's our overall comments. <laughs> so, they're an important food source for a lot of animals. What would we call an ant eater if we didn't have ants? Oh. I know, what would an ant eater eat? We'd have to, I don't know. Wow. Give a new name. That just really <laughs> gave just me a mind, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Food source. Um, pest control, even. There are some ant species that they prey on some of those other pests, like flea larvae, the babies of the fleas, flies, 
uh, bed bugs, and all kinds of what we consider pests for us. So they actually do a lot more good than harm. Sorry, Cynthia. I know, but <laughs> so, um, <laughs> most ant species are not like the fire ants and the ones that uh, we consider pests. And a lot of Natalie animals. is actually asking, how do fire ants help? Uh, That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like, uh, I'm going to assume because they make those the uh, the mounds. Do you guys see them? Really um, going the down, they're aerating the soil and you know bringing nutrients to the plants to grow. So they do more for us too. But not just you know, to cause major know. allergic reaction <laughs> for Cynthia. Yeah, <laughs> Yep, and Beth says always a food source for animals yeah. to eat ants. So, Ooh, yeah, fire ants. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Nope. <laughs> All right, so just like the ants, this guy, he's got an important job of cleaning up the world. Have you guys met him before? Have we brought them out for you before? Yeah. He returns. Uh -huh. oh, Charles so says have. centipedes. Yeah. Right, centipede. Talk a little bit about the difference. Yeah. So is this a centipede or a millipede? What do you guys think? Hmm. You've been with us before. We've talked Look at about all the, the legs. The way the legs are. Yeah, and all the legs. Uh, millipede. There you go. Yeah. And Nicole, good job, guys. Yep, we got a millipede. Millie. Nicole says millipede. Nice, yep. Yeah. And millipedes are not, are different from centipedes in what they eat. So centipedes, are carnivores or the meat eaters, so they're hunters. Millipedes are not. So just like those ants, they're eating that dead and decaying plant materials, or the fancy science word. Does anybody know the fancy science word for an animal that eats dead and decaying plants? It's right. It's right. Nice. It's a tritivores. Absolutely. Nice job. And detritus is just basically a fancy word for dead decaying plants. So they are eating all that up. They're digesting it. And then they're pooping nutrients back into the soil. So recycling the world, which is super important, guys. So all those dead plants and animals, if they weren't getting cleaned up, our world would be a much more gross, <laughs> sickly place. There would be a lot of bacteria, a lot more diseases, a lot more stuff going on. So these guys are vitally important. Like the ants, our millipedes, our worms, all those critters out there working with clean up the world for us and make bigger soil so our plants can grow. So I have a question, yes. Nikki. This is just a personal question. Okay. But you know how some people say like, oh, your old is dirt. Well, what if it's recently pooped dirt? Uh -huh. Is it still old or would that be considered new dirt? Um, I would Ooh. consider that fresh dirt. <laughs> yeah, see? So Cynthia. Your oldest dirt, new oh. dirt. Your oldest millipede poop. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any questions about our friend Millie the millipede here? So this is the African giant millipede. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the largest millipedes in the world. It can get up to about seven, eight, top, top of the line, 12 inches. That's not as, that's more regular than anything, but, so he's not quite full grown, he, she, whatever, <laughs> I don't know. Um, he didn't get much bigger than this. So he's not quite full grown yet. And it's really beauty. cool, so as they get older, they add on, you see all those lines? Oh, that's great, yeah. A that's segment, great. right? And each segment of a millipede has, does anybody know how many legs are on each segment of a millipede? Let's see if we can get close enough, can you count them? <laughs> oh, that's a good oh, shot. Nice, right? Wow. There's four, where the centipede only has two legs per segment. So they have more legs in the millie, but they don't ever have a thousand. Millie, millie means set a thousand. They may max out at, I think, what, 750? I think I read somewhere. I think that's what. But it's usually yeah. around 500 or so when they get full grown. I've never counted this, guys. I don't have the patience, so uh, don't ask me how many legs he has. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about them? I love watching their legs. I think it's so cool. Yeah. It's like a wave. I can barely walk on two. Same. There they are. <laughs> Hundreds of legs. Nice. 
I do not have any questions. All right, I'm gonna put Millie back. Thanks, Millie. I think they're all Millie. <laughs> they're all kind of named Millie. Oh, she's right, you can do it bigger. Uh, Natalie just asked, what about their antenna? What about them? <laughs> they have them. <laughs> You're like, what do they use them for? <laughs> um, that's kind of their sense organ. So you saw them working. They're looking around. They're touching, feeling, kind of smelling a little bit. So they use that as their major sense organ. And that's how they kind of feel their sense their world and find out where the food is and what's going on like that. So they constantly move it. I'm going to have them out. That's all they do is move around. I hope that answers your questions. <laughs> and um, I believe Me Mech or Mecca uh, wants to know: Can you drop it? So what? Uh, basically, I guess what happens if you drop it? Um, probably would not be good, especially if it's from far up, far up above too high up. Yeah, it wouldn't survive. Kind of like the tarantulas we talked about in the past. Um, the exoskeleton, yeah, it's you know it's it's there for protection, but it's only so much it can do. And they're a heavier insect. A lot of our yes. small insects could handle it, but the heavier ones, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, gravity takes over and you do a lot more harm on the bigger insects. But the smaller ones can handle it, no problem. <laughs> Which is crazy to think about because they're so light that, you know, it's like, wee. <laughs> stones. <laughs> All right. My next. Hey, we want to big thing. Oh, you thank you, Oinker. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Are ooh pretty. Yeah. Why would we should we be thankful for coral? Because they're pretty. That too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And they make beautiful art. Huge tourist industry. Those pretty <laughs> humans. Right. Anything else? Any reason we should be thankful to coral? Thank you, coral. I know you guys know this. <laughs> Think of course. Nemo. Important. What is coral? Do you guys know what coral is? Just mess that. What is it? Is it a plant? Ah, is it an animal? animal? Well, they provide homes for fish, was Natalie's comment. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So they provide shelter and homes for lots and lots of fish. About, what did I read somewhere? It's about 25% <laughs> of ocean's fish and animals are usually found around coral reefs. Yeah, so super important. So what are they? Are they animals? Ooh. You guys think, what is coral? It's a great question. Yeah. Is it an animal? Is it a plant? Is it a rock? Charles <laughs> <laughs> is thinking animal. You're probably right, because we're thinking animals today, right? So <laughs> it absolutely is. So coral is a bunch of little animals. That is so cool. Kind of form together. So this is like the pollen stage mm -hmm. of them. So and they all and they form and like then, little palm trees. And they make you know they create and then once they die off they leave behind that harder substance behind them as new coral grow up and on top of them and they just keep building up. And so the the hard stuff is I guess kind of like the skeleton. Kind of they're what they leave behind. Mm. And so it creates so much diversity. Very cool. So lots of food for other animals. And then of course, those animals want to eat those animals and those animals want <laughs> to eat those animals and so on. So they keep bringing in more. To the shark. And not only that, where they live or where they build the reef, it builds um, a calmer space behind it between the land and the reef. So it makes it a much more sheltered area. So a lot of animals come there to have babies because it's protected and it doesn't worry about the storms and the waves and like that so it's much more protected area so coral reefs super super important and that's why we should absolutely protect them any questions about coral i have a lot of questions about coral <laughs> it's so intriguing it's amazing that that is a you know that is an animal mm -hmm. just because we think of sure we all know that you know there's there's plankton and there's algae and i mean yeah. but but those even, you know, that there's separation and then coral and sea anemones and sea urchins. Yeah. Wow. So much life on them. It's amazing. Cool. And like I said, and then of course a lot of people want to come see it. It's beautiful. So it brings a lot of tourism and a lot of you know to a lot of poor countries too. So it is pretty awesome. All right. <laughs> so uh <-huh. laughs> you. You're awesome. Yes, you too. are. Oh, that's yeah. adorable. 
Why are we should be thankful for amphibians? Because they're adorable. Oh, they're cute. This right. is a big one. This is an important question, y'all. Be thinking. Right. Answer this in the chat. And if you're not sure what amphibian is, these are two examples of what amphibians are. Get frogs, toads, and salamanders. So why do we want to be thankful for them? Other than they're cute. <laughs> What do you guys think? Anybody have an answer? Ideas? Thoughts? There's no right or wrong here, guys, so don't be afraid to put stuff in chat. We're not judging. We're all here to learn. I constantly learn new things every time I do these programs, so I'm always learning. Yeah, Charles, you're, you're right. Uh, salamanders and Sicilians, uh, yeah, those are what we're talking about, but we want to know why why they're important. You know, what? Right. Why should we be thankful? Why is Nikki sending them a thank you card, right? And can they read it? <laughs> Probably not. I'll have to read it to them. Oh, that's adorable. Hi. Can we do your thank you note? Yeah, yes. Oh, hi, Forrest. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, hi, Forrest. Can I say hi? Yes. Thank you, Forrest. You and your kind rock. You are You're awesome. Do we have any ideas? I'm not seeing any. <laughs> well, well. <coughs> excuse me. Oh, did tickle my throat. <laughs> Sorry, Forrest. <laughs> Trying not to cough on anybody. I was saying. So let's look at their skin. What can you tell me about their skin? What's it look like? Is it look smooth, rough, wet, dry? What do you guys think? Wet. Wet. Yeah. Wet. wet. It's wet. You might have noticed before I got forced out here, I put water on my gloves, special clean water on my gloves, because amphibians have special skin. There we go. Does anybody know why they have special skin? Because they, they look smooth and damp. Right. Absolutely smooth and damp. That's why they're amphibian. Because reptiles have what covering their skin, their their body. I can't, I'm looking around. Here he is. So now we think amphibians live in oh, the rainforest. Focus. Oh, there are some. And their skin is that way so they can breathe. Oh, oh we're getting there, yes. So there are some that live in the rainforest. And but there's you know what? North Carolina actually has over 60 species of salamanders because we have such a diverse uh, habitat so we have a lot of salamanders. So it's not just the rainforest. So they live, amphibians can live just about anywhere except for, of course, the Antarctic, so I'm gonna rearrange them. I don't wanna drop them. There we go. So yes, they have smooth skin and they can breathe through their skin. Right, who said that? That was Nicole. Ice Nicole. So they can breathe. Right. So they take in oxygen through their skin and they can take in water through their skin. So because salamanders, a lot of times when they're first born, oh gosh. the eggs are hatched in water. They're laid in water. And their first part of their life is spent in water. And then some of them stay in water their whole life. Some of them come out to land, like Forrest here, who is a spotted salamander. I know we're always so you uh, <laughs> he's so cute. He is. He's I know adorable. I'm moving the camera on you guys, but he's just so active right now. I know, he's and all over the place. Like that's adorable. So I forgot what I was saying. Sorry. <laughs> spotted. Right. So he's a spotted salamander. So he moves, he leaves the water and he goes and lives on land. And he usually lives under logs. You can find them in the forest under logs where it's nice and kind of moist and wet. So they can continue to breathe through their skin. So if, let's say, um, somebody was using a pesticide and it went into, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that coordinated, but. He's like. <laughs> All right, um, again, there we go. Okay. So, <laughs> Reset. <laughs> So if somebody were to spray like a pesticide and it ran into, it rained and that pesticide went, <laughs> went into the water, like a 
pond or wherever. <laughs> do you think an animal that breathes through its skin and takes in water would be able to survive when there's chemicals and pollutants in their environment? I'm gonna say no. No, right. They cannot, so they're super sensitive to the world and their environment. So they're the big fancy word, they're bio indicators. So bio means life and indicators means, well, they indicate, right? They point things out. So when they start disappearing, they're letting us know that there's something going on with the environment. So they're indicating the health of our world and our ecosystem. So super important jobs. We have to be careful of our amphibians and keep an eye on their populations. So because if it's a healthy world for them, it's gonna be healthy for us. And who wouldn't want to just like be walking around through the woods and like just see a little forest roaming around? I well, I will say they live in a forest, but they're hard to um, spot. <laughs> 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 Thank you for the show for us. Oh, um, Natalie wants to know how many feet does he have? How many feet? He has four. And I think, let's see, most salmoners have four or five toes. Some of them, some of them actually only have four toes on each feet, but I think he's got five. I remember correctly. I just thought we don't have feet. He toes. And Atticus says, what was he again? He's a spotted salamander. So originally, animals. Pretty much. Yeah, so he's spotted because he gets spots, right? And it's <laughs> pointing out their tetrapods. Mm -hmm. More feet. And nice. Liam is questioning why are they called amphibians? Oh, amphibian, excuse me, means kind of dual life. So they spend part of their life in water and part on land. And so that's kind of where that comes around. So good question. So he is an amphibian, so when he, when the, if Forrest were going to be out there with a girlfriend, or, <laughs> okay, if a female spotted salamander was going to go lay her eggs, she would find um, a pool, we call them ephemeral pools, which means there's water in the forest after, in the spring, um, from all the rain and all that happens in the spring, it makes these temporary pools, and that's where they go and lay their eggs, and then by the time it's dried up, the salamanders have hatched They've gone through their larval phase or their uh, whatever phase I can think of it right now, and then they're starting to become adults. So by the time it dries up, so they don't necessarily go to ponds and like that, but sometimes they go to streams and anything like that. So they spend part of life in water and part of land, and then of course some of them go completely against it and stay in land or should we say in water the whole time? Sorry, we have a friend coming in. I just want to make room for them. There we, go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. So amphibians, bioindicators, very important job. Also, a lot of our frogs and, and forest too, they eat insects. So they're pest controllers. So they're out there kind of cleaning up the world for us too, keeping those pests in check. So super, super important job. All right. My next beautiful forest. All right. My next. Although I got this up in and I should change it. It should be, huh? you should be E W E. Why did you mess up? I, I didn't think King would have done. I would only have done. That is horrible. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you, Bats. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was this way. Yes. You stab. <laughs> Anybody, was anybody here last week and heard all about bats? Let's see, put your hand, or this week and raise your hand, Charles. <laughs> if you yeah. saw it, somebody <laughs> If somebody was here last week and heard us talk about bats. I was Liam, yeah. And they eat bugs and they eat plants, they eat bugs that eat plants. Right, absolutely. They eat a lot of insects that eat our plants. So they're seeing farmers billions of dollars and pest control, right? 
Uh, let's see, anyone else? Anything else? Remember Charles? Or, excuse me, Liam. Ooh. Any other ways they help us? I'll give you a hand. Here it is. Ooh. Oh, they, they always talk the about bat. them giving fertilizer. Right? Fertilizer. Poop. Even the bat poop is good. So that's fertilizer for lots of different <laughs> plants to grow <laughs> and food for other <laughs> animals. We met some cockroaches. That, that's how they eat. The bat poop. Anything else? What's this guy eating? They eat fruit. Some eat fruit. You're thinking, oh, you're stealing my fruit. But when he eats that fruit, he digests the seeds and then he poops out seeds as he's flying through the night and he's dispersing yeah. the seeds. That's why we have bananas and cashews and lots of different plants. And their bats are almost single handedly um, responsible for bringing rainforest back because they fly over open fields, pooping out seeds <laughs> so more rainforest can grow. More plants and trees can grow. Uh, what's this guy eating? Mm. Ah. I think I get no tongue. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I didn't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> Flowers. Right. Yeah. So they eat nectar. What is he doing? Pollen. Right. He's collecting. You notice he's got this fuzzy head. He's collecting all that pollen. And then when he goes to another flower, he's going to drop off the pollen, drop the new one, and then so on. So he is doing what? For those flowers. That's the fancy science word. And it has pollen in the name. Mm -hmm. It's being a... <laughs> well, I think Liam put it in the Q&A, but pollinator. Oh, pollinator, there you go, right. So we're pollinators, absolutely. <laughs> so then more, more fruits and stuff can grow. Um, and again, that insect eaters, um, seed dispersers, uh, yep, and yep, lots of pest control, really important job. Yeah, lots of reasons, lots of reasons to say thank your bats. <laughs> Remember last week we thanked them for our Halloween candy? Mm-hmm. Some chocolate. I had an almond bar joy or almond joy bar <laughs> <laughs> and chocolate, the coconut, and the almonds. Or you can thank bats because they're eating the pests. Um, sometimes they're pollinating. They're doing all kinds of different things to help those plants to grow. You have a question? Oh, you were reading. Something. <laughs> yeah. no. Oh, okay. sorry, Joseph. It's is. It, uh, Sorry, I was remembering from the last time. It said last time it was Liam. This there, I think there's oh. two Paulas again. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So that's our facts. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I didn't help us though. Uh -huh. Two of my favorites and fun. <laughs> it says you're awesome. Thank you. Birds. Oh, you yeah. would put those Scouts, together. My bird, there, of course. You would put those together. Cats and I love birds. <laughs> Two don't always go well together, but <laughs> but I love them both. I love cats. Yeah. <laughs> and we talked about how you know animals are the tritivores. They're eating. They're you know recycling the world. Um, they're aerating soil. They're a food source. They're bioindicators. They're pest controllers. Um, they're poop is good. All that. Birds do it all. They literally do it all the species, different species do lots of different things. Pollination too for hummingbirds. And Natalie wanted so, to comment, they also lay eggs, lay like other animals to eat. Right, yeah. absolutely food source. Absolutely really big food source. So birds yeah. kind of are, do it all. So they're indicators, those bioindicators too, because have you guys ever heard the saying um, canary in the coal mine? Mm -hmm. coal, coal mine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that have you heard of that? But yes or no in the chat. Yeah. 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 Nice. All right. All right. So literally, like years ago, before we had equipment to tell us the health of the environment in the coal mines, they would take a cage with a canary, which is a small little bird, down in there. And if the bird started acting like, oh my god, this is dying, I can't breathe. They knew there was the air was toxic, and they needed to get out. And so that's what they mean by that. So they're telling the healthy environment, and that's kind of what they're doing with the world. The birds and amphibians are disappearing. Who oh, we're in trouble. So that's why we gotta watch and take care of these critters to help us out. And then our favorite pest controller, <laughs> if you wanna, who wants to bring her out? <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. So canaries are kind of like the bioindicators of the coal mine. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. right. The amphibians are in their environment. I know. And our next friend, she's 
she is an awesome pest controller. Oh, she's a fantastic hunter. She is, and oh. you guys know who she is. Can, can Gwen point out that for patients in nursing homes, bird visitors, they come to feeding stations outside the window and help them connect to, to the world and to nature nice. and what a wonderful purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love watching her ears. Yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. Perfect. She's like, oh, I don't want to listen to her. Too. Very <laughs> sweet reminder, Gwen. <laughs> yes, thank you, Gwen. That's great. All right. Miss Tara. Oh. It's okay, girl. You're all right. We're just going to make it quiet. You just have to... Um, the just unplug it. It works. <laughs> that works. You got a fans going. It gets hot in here, so I, we have fans going. So I think we're our next guest. I was a little nervous with the noise. Maybe if they want to come out. Have you guys guessed who our our okay. favorite pest controller is? Okay. You guys might have. If you've joined us in the past, you probably yeah. have met her. Come on. Here. <laughs> we know it's a bird. Yeah. We know it's a bird that helps control pests like the mice population, rats, um, getting a mosquito hawk, eagle. And Charles thinks it might be Tara. Charles, you know us so well. Oh, there she is. I'm going to get off because she's way cuter than me. <laughs> she is so sweet. Look at her. Aww. Yeah, she's yeah. you. Apparently, she doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> she didn't want to come for me. I'm so, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, so, this is Tara. And does anybody know what kind of owl is she? If you've met her before. <laughs> oh, Charles says she's a barred owl. All right, she is a barred owl. B A R R E D. Because if you look at her belly, this Natalie, this is Natalie too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Tara. Oh. She kind of has these beautiful kind of bars on her belly. So, helps her to do what? What are those bars helping her to do? If she's sitting in a tree, if she was up in a tree, would you be able to see her? Mm. You guys think? She's like, no, thank you. No, we wouldn't be able to see her. So, <laughs> so what is she? She's right. So, what is that called when you blend into your kind of your background? What's that fancy C word? <laughs> All is noted that her eye is gone, and right. Charles gives us camouflage. <laughs> right. Excellent camouflage. Which is why she's a perfect pest controller because she can hide. And owls are super, 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 super silent. They are known for their silent flight. I wish you guys could feel owls' feathers. They have the <laughs> softest feathers. And that extra kind of layering on, on each feather kind of muffles any air. So when they flap their wings, it muffles the air. So it keeps their, their wings be quiet. And that way they can. What do you think? Why would they want to be quiet? Why do they need to be quiet? What do you guys think? Why does she <laughs> want to be quiet? It is super quiet, and here it feels weird about those Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's weirding me out a little bit. A little too quiet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to catch their prey, right? To catch their prey. You guys have I heard think... of quiet as a mouse. Well, <laughs> oh, quiet as yeah. an owl. Yeah. <laughs> quiet as an owl, right? So they're quiet for two reasons to catch their prey, so be able to hear their prey, right? Because they actually hunt using their hearing, their eyesight and their hearing. And so they can actually hear their prey. So they don't want their, or should I say that twice? Yeah. <laughs> so they don't want the prey to hear them. So it'd be quiet so their food can't hear them. And then they want to be able to hear that mouse kind of walking around on the ground. And if their wings are making a lot of noise, they wouldn't be able to hear that mouse walking around. So. Helps them out in a couple different ways. And you're right, somebody noticed she is missing an eye. <coughs> so Miss Tara, she um, came to the hospital here we have, have at the zoo called a rehabilitation center, where if somebody finds an injured animal out there, a wild animal, they can bring it in and we try to fix them up and put them back in the wild. But Miss Tara's injuries were a little too hard or too much and she was not able to hunt. So they tested her, they put her in a, uh, an area and they tried to see if she could catch a live mouse. 
and she kept failing. She couldn't do it because she had that eye injury and she had a little bit of wing injury, but it's mostly the eyesight that really kind of held her back from being able to hunt and being released back in the wild. But lucky <coughs> for us, somebody who was very calm, <laughs> patient and worked with her um, a long time to get her to sit on this, on her glove like this. So and speaking so of chilled. patience and her to be chill, um, <coughs> Natalie wants to know, could she fly away in the room? So she cannot because she's, um, so Natalie, Tara is attached to Natalie. <laughs> the other Natalie, <laughs> this Natalie. So if you notice, you can come up a little bit closer yeah. see how she goes. You can show all the gear. So Miss Tara has like anklets kind of around her feet. And then we ask yeah. her to step up in the glove and then we put a lot of this gear on her. Um, and that's a lot of training. So she didn't do it for me earlier. I tried and she's like, no, I'm not working for you today. <laughs> so I couldn't take her, but because they've been working with her more and <laughs> work with her on a daily, she trusted them more than she trusted me. So she didn't want to work for me today. So she, she has a, um, so she'll sit on that glove and let you put all this gear on it. And so she is kind of, tethered to the glove so she can't fly off now when she can't hurt herself because if she did she could have been she could potentially hurt herself so charles made a comment i wish there was such thing as a robotic eye uh that is someday you never know that and there are nice job charles. and even not even robotic but there are glass eyes <laughs> you know, or, guys, well, they, they you know. and so miss tara right. um when i first started working with her she actually had her eye um, but she injured it somehow and it started causing her a lot of pain and getting infection. And then we had, had to make the decision, do we take, remove it? So she doesn't have to pain because she could re-injure it, constantly keep re-injuring it. Or, you know, they, they actually thought about getting her a glass eye or doing something like that. But again, that could cause infection and cause her harm. So it was just the best option was to just take it out. And, and, and that way she's, she has any issues since. So. She's been good since then. So that was a divide. <laughs> we, we, there was an option. I remember them yeah. talking about. She just, she's made her. this adjustment instead of the yeah. adjustment to yeah. something yeah. funny being in her eye. Yeah. Because I think that would be weird having something like having a rock. I don't even <laughs> like having contacts. Think about that. I think yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So any questions about, other questions about Miss Sarah? Mm, not seeing any. Yeah. So she's Miss Tara. Um, so um, barred owls are super common around here. If you have woods around your house, you probably have barred owls, especially this time of year. They're starting to call and make all kinds of noise, set up territories, um, looking for boyfriends and girlfriends, uh, all that good stuff. We have a question. Well, that kind of was it. The honey oh, owls she hoots or calls to other owls. Oh yes, they definitely do, and they have a um, a unique call. Can you guys do it? And it sounds do, like who cooks for you, but I cannot do it. I can't let me you guys. I'm not good at it. Wow. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, Le Leslie's great Leslie at it. Leslie to do it. <laughs> so, I didn't think to bring the identifier. So, sounds like she's saying, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? But she doesn't wait better. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they do, and they call out. I've heard, like, especially in the wintertime when they're uh, setting up, you know, their territories and talking back and forth to this, it sounds like monkeys in your woods. They just did these little hoot calls that they start calling back and forth. And say, like, <laughs> literally sounds like monkeys and birds. It's barred owls. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have monkeys no, here. No. <laughs> um, Natalie, Natalie does want to know what does she eat? So what are you feeding, Miss Dara? She goes either chicks or mice. And today is a chick day. So I have a chicken here. Um, it already comes to us frozen. We thaw it out and then cut it up to give it to her in pieces to reward her for being calm. Yep. She's hanging out with us. But in the wild, they would pretty much eat anything they can catch and carry off. Yeah. And they're not picky at all. They're what we call <laughs> opportunistic feeders. But they eat lots of, you know, small mice and rodents and snakes and lizards and frogs, uh, birds, whatever, anything they can catch and carry off. Not picky. Mm -hmm. That's why they, they do very well. Their, their populations are not in any, <laughs> any trouble whatsoever. <laughs> any other questions? Oh, oh. Something just came up. Oh, no, nope. pretty, oh. pretty good. <laughs> An owl emoji and a smiley face. Oh, nice. that, was, that was cute. All right. Well, we'll say goodbye to Miss Tara. Oh, um, can, can she fly? Yes, yes. <laughs> she can. She can, yes. Yeah. So the, the, her flight strength was not um, 
not the reason she was right. kept from it being released. Yeah. Right, so, but yeah. the, the damage to the eyes kind of yeah. affected depth perception mm -hmm. and how far she could fly safely. Right. Yep. Just like if you guys, if you've ever tried to catch, um, I, if you want to try it, <laughs> get a, a, scary, a Nerf ball or something really, really soft and try playing catch with this one eye open. Nope. Cover one eye up. It's not easy. It's hard to tell how far away something is. And when you rely on your eyesight for catching mice mm -hmm. and without moving objects, you need to know how exactly how far away stuff is. So, yep. So that's why she had issues catching those mice who mm -hmm. tested her. All right. Well, thank, thank you, so much. That's it. Natalie and Tara. Thank you, friends. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> we've gone through everybody. So we've we've met everyone. Let we'll them go home. Good job. <laughs> Here we go. Good job, Tara. Good job, Tara. So that's pretty cool. That so I think it still amazes me that she was a wild bird. And that um, she does so well. She just sits on the gloves so quietly. She goes in and out of crates when we ask her to. And so she's awesome. She's such a cool bird. And she's about, we guess to make 20 to 22 years old. We're not 100% sure, to be honest with you. Oh, bag. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was. <laughs> it's for the Millie's. Millipedes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, all right. Are we ready? Our last one. What do you think is the number one animal we should be most thankful for? What do you guys think? What animal should we be most thankful for? Hmm. I say we, I mean our human species. We should be thanking these critters every single day. Bye. Every day Bye. should be thanking. Bye, Natalie. Bye, Natalie. Bye, Natalie. Bye, Bye. Thank you, guys. Oh, well, Charles says ant eater. You know. <laughs> and Natalie says all of them. Oh, Gwen says bees. Oh, nice. <laughs> there we go. There we go. You get a thank you. You get a thank you. Everyone gets a thank Yay! you. Bees. Nice. Absolutely. So think about this, guys. For every Three bites of food you take. One out of three bites of food you take. Thank a bee. Because a lot, even though you're saying I only eat meat, I don't eat those pesky vegetables and anything like that. Well, the food we feed, cows and chickens, and the bees. And why? Why? What are they doing? To help. Us. What's their job? What is the important job of a bee? Pollinating. Mm. Right. Pollination. Absolutely. So pollinating all those plants, all the food, we eat a lot of different things. So super, super important. So if there were no bees, the only plants I read somewhere, they're really the only plants that would be around for us to eat, be corn, rice, yeah, we still get a lot of food out of that, but that's it. There's no variety in there at all. There'll be no fruits, very few vegetables, anything like that. So super, super important. Now, most people think of bees that live in, they think, of course, the honeybee, right? They're out there doing their job. Let me ask you guys here, are honeybees native to the United States? Oh, great question. Yeah. Charles says, yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling confident. Yeah. But actually, honeybees are not native. So they were actually brought over. If you think about it, the food that they are pollinating, the stuff that we eat, is not native either. Mm -hmm. So that was brought over, like apples and uh, pizza. I don't know what else was brought over. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of other stuff was brought over. Really, it was like, so. No, they're not native. So they were actually brought over, I want to say, in the early 1600s to colony. And then they just kind of took off. And we, but we rely on them now. We absolutely rely, even though they're not native. But we do have a lot of native bees. And a lot of them are what we call a 
about 90% of our bees we have in North Carolina are what we call solitary bees, which means they don't live in big colonies like that. They kind of live off on their own and they live either underground, so they dig burrows on the ground, or they go into the ends of, uh, uh, the well, the ends of branches or sticks or plants or dead trees, anything like that, and they make their nests in there. So one bee would go in here and it would lay the egg. There's kind of a life cycle of the bee, it's kind of cool. Let's see if we can see it. <laughs> see, which way are we going? Which way are we going? There it is. <laughs> All right. So there's egg here. She so would lay the egg in there and with some actually some food, some honey and some nectar and pollen. And then as it grows and kind of like this little larvae thing, and then it keeps growing and then it eventually emerges and becomes a bee. That's pretty cool. And they do give us honey, of course, about that. But <clears throat> in order to help those bees, <laughs> not gonna <wear> this guy. <laughs> Aww. Mm, <Hi>. <laughs> so we're gonna help the bees. There's some things you guys can do. Cool little things you guys can do to help all those kind of native bees. Um, leave your yards kind of natural as much as you can. Like I said, they like to live in the trees that are kind of you know dying a little bit or a lot of like um as a plant flowers and it kind of starts to die it leaves those kind of the stems behind you like the lay their eggs and those anything like that so anything you can kind of leave natural um dirt if you have dirt leave it that's where those bees will go down on the ground those kind of burrow bees that are done burrow, burrow wing <laughs> there are burrow trees <laughs> say that kind of those guys and what's really cool is you can actually make a bee hotel. Yeah, that looks fun. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So you can do any kind of container. Like I use my, thank you, you're welcome. My, my <laughs> coffee drinking habits. <laughs> so you could do, I'm um, using plastic soda bottles, uh, anything you can want that kind of keeps them, kind of one end that's kind of closed and one end that's open. And you just find sticks, like I have bamboo, um, any kind of like reeds or anything like that, that are open like that. And the bee will go in there, uh, like I said, she'll lay her egg and then she'll build a barrier. She'll lay another egg, she'll build a barrier. And she'll lay, so she'll have like several different eggs in there and then they can grow and then you can have more bees. Yay! Oh, so yeah, so you guys can do this super easy. So yeah, so I did some that had holes in them and then I just kind of filled in the spaces and they'll go into some of those crevices too and lay their eggs in there if it's nice and tight and they fit just the right width and different holes is better because there's different sizes of bees. So yeah, lots of different sizes helps. But just like any hotel, you need a maid service. So you gotta keep it clean. So what you do is you attach your container. It has to be kind of solid, don't let hang it for the bees. When it's windy and it's moving, the bee's trying to get in and it's moving around in the wind and the bee can't get in. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> Make sure it's on a solid surface. It's attached so it can't blow in the wind. The bee's a much easier time landing and getting in there. And then in the spring, what you do is you very gently pull those out and you can place them on the ground because last year's larvae might still be in there or the adults and they're about to emerge. And so you leave them there and let them emerge and they'll come out. And then you put fresh ones in there. So don't leave these in year after year because then um, bacteria, uh, fungus, and mites get in here and they end up doing more harm than good. So you do have to, you gotta be in maid service and clean them out every year. So to keep your bees safe. So, and you can read out, there's lots of cool websites and lots of places, there's resources that you guys can find to make your own little bee hotel and help the bees out. They are super important. And we want to thank them very much. Nice. Do we have any questions? Well, Charles did have a comment about yeah. so with the honeybee uh, coming over, kind of like how the Africanized bees in Florida, a similar situation you were thinking. Well, I don't know. I think the honeybees are a lot more beneficial <laughs> than these other bees. I don't really know much about these the African bees. I really don't know much about them, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't read. <laughs> you think about them and if they're beneficial or not. They might have some, I just don't know. 
But you guys can look that up and find out. This part. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Natalie wants to know how did they get the bees to America? Um, probably on ships. Yeah. So they probably had like, I similar to what we've seen we have today with um, with honeybee um, honeybee people, <laughs> beekeepers. That's what they're called. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yes. So they have the, the big box hives. They probably had some version of like that back then, and just put them on a ship and brought them over. Yeah, I don't. I'm assuming that's how it was done because back then that's all that was the only option. They didn't have planes back then, so had to been by ship. Stowed away. Imagine it could have been a, on a ship full of bees. No, that. <laughs> I imagine. I don't know. They probably. Well, because they do winterize, so I'm assuming that they were maybe hmm. kind of maybe hibernating at the time. So certain time of the year, I'm not sure. It's cool. Very it's interesting. Cool. That's what I love you guys asking yeah. questions. Make you think. <laughs> any other questions? Don't see any. All right. Well, we thank a lot of animals, and I want to thank you guys now for joining us. Um, hopefully, you guys will join us next Thursday. We're doing our um, collaboration with the aquariums. It is a feed program, so you have to pay for that one. But you get to meet some aquarium animals, and Leslie's, Leslie's going to join. And um, I'm not sure what their topic is next week. Have to find out. Um, and then the week after that. The week before Thanksgiving, you get me again. And we're going to thank the North Carolina Zoo and all the cool stuff that we do. All right, guys. Have a safe day, and hopefully we'll see you next couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Bye, Take friends. Care.